What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today the video you guys have been waiting for and that is we are going to be installing the Rytec lowering kit on the new to me 2020 GMC Sierra Denali. So guys, this kit will fit a 2019 and up um, Silverado Sierra um, basically the truck variant of these things. And so I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step how-to on how to install this. Now, with that being said, guys, um, look, I'm going to do a couple follow-up videos on like towing and ride quality. Uh, so, and I don't know, uh, we'll just have to see. I may do a separate video on the vat, on the, like the helper bag install because you don't have to have that. I chose to get it, so we'll just see if it, it all goes in this video. But I will tell you guys, here's what I'm going to do. I've got four shirts, so I got a couple short sleeves, and I've got a long sleeve, and then I have four hats. So the first, let's say, eight people to comment on this video, I will send you guys one of these shirts, assuming it's your size. If you wanna choose the hat instead, we can go that route. But the first eight people to go down in the comments and give me a thumbs up on this video, I will send you some ride tech swag so anyway guys here's what we got going on we've got obviously this is stock height this is a four-wheel drive truck this kit works on a two or four-wheel drive truck and uh, i actually have this had this thing down here for a couple days because i cleaned it all up i wanted it to be nice and clean now chances are the inner fenders won't be but the very first thing i want to do is i want to take an initial measurement it's always a good idea to do before you start dropping one is to kind of know what did we start with i mean other than being able to visually see that it's lower i want to know what the measurements are all the way around because with it being a coilover in the front we could potentially have if you guys know like the older silverados and sierras had what they call the chevy lean that it's lower a little bit lower on the passenger side if that is the case on this truck, we can compensate for that with the coilover on that side. So that's really nice. And we may do that if there is a variance. So either way, I'm gonna grab a tape measure and I won't make you guys watch me measure it all, but I'm gonna go around, get a measurement from the very center of the wheel up to where this guy hits the tape measure. So to the ground in the center of the wheel up to this is where I'm gonna get a measurement all the way around. There's a little bit of a variance, guys, but not anything like one of those trucks over there on the trailer. So uh, driver's side front, we're at 35 and three quarters. Passenger side front, so over here, 35 and 11 sixteenths. In the back, however, there's a little bit of a difference, about three sixteenths of an inch. On the passenger side here, it's 38 inches. On the driver's side, it's 38 and three sixteenths. Now, I am measuring, like I said, from the ground and the center of the wheel up to where the plastic starts. So you have to look at it from this angle, you really need to be sitting in a chair or something or be level with it to get an accurate measurement. So there's a probably a quarter inch there where it's beveled, I'm measuring to the bottom of it. That makes sense. So let's get started guys. We are gonna get this thing off the ground, get some jack stands under it. I'm probably gonna use two jacks, one on each side of the frame. I'm gonna get a jack stand right behind that and I will show you where I place my jack stands and the jacks and then we'll get the wheels off. Let's take a look at where we put our jack stands before we knock the wheels off. I've got the jack right where the frame starts to bend in the front here behind the front tire and then the jack stand right behind it. And I've got the same thing going on on both sides. You guys don't have to have two jacks necessarily. It would come in handy once you get it off the ground. Obviously you can pull the jack out. I'm gonna leave mine there, but let's get these wheels off. Normally on your front wheel, if you're using a stock wheel, um, seven eighths would be the size. I had to put a spacer in here. You guys know that if you watched the video a while back. So because I'm running a spacer, I had to run an extended thread lug nut. Has nothing to do with this whole deal, but just want to let you guys know what the sizes are as we go. I'll also try to list the equipment that I'm using, but I'm going to knock these off with my electric impact, get the wheel out of the place, and then we'll be able to see kind of what we're dealing with. Now that we've got the wheel off, you can see how much fun we've, we've gotten ourselves into here, guys. But it's really not bad. It's actually, if, if a guy wasn't doing their upper A-arms, which I do suggest if you're doing this, um, you really the only thing we'd be replacing is the spring and the strut. Now, uh, since we're doing this, we're gonna have to knock this guy loose, right? So we're gonna have to take the upper A arm loose. We're gonna have to take the all the lines that hook to the upper A arm loose. We actually have to pull the upper A arm completely out, and then we have to take the strut and the strut assembly out. Now, um, there's gonna be a process that I'm gonna show you as we go, but that's kind of the components of this front kit. 
Obviously guys, we're also dealing with a truck that has the newer stuff has mag right on just about everything. So we're going to have to bypass this, um, in a couple different ways. So we've got, we've got a ride height sensor that's connected right here. We're going to have to bypass. And then the strut itself has a wire going to it um, that we're going to have to bypass. So I'll show you guys, that's a separate deal that you don't get from ride tech. And I'll list that in the description as well. And you'll see a little bit more of that as we get um, a little further along. But for now, let's go grab some wrenches and see what we want to take off first. Now I'm gonna go a little bit different than the instructions go just because I think um, it makes a little more sense. You can do the instruction way. It's just, um, since we're replacing the A-arm, they have separate instructions for the A-arm and the strut removal. But guys, we're gonna start with the 10 millimeter up here and we're gonna loosen this tab that holds on our um, ABS line is what this is. Your brake line's actually connected to the spindle down here. So this is your ABS line that communicates obviously with the brake system, but we need to take this off it's a 10 millimeter and I'm going to just leave it to the side, but I'm going to thread this back in. Now we are going to be reusing this, so don't lose this. That's why I always thread it back in just to make sure that's out of the way. So once we've got that loose, I'm also going to loosen it here. And the only reason I'm doing that is because um, I think we're going to have, we're going to need a little bit of room in order for this spindle to swing. And I just don't want to put any tension on this. You could pop it out of the little deal here as well. But to me, it makes a little more sense to do it this way. The other thing, guys, I'm going to show you just one side. I'm showing you the hardest side because of the access to the bolts. I don't know if you guys can see this big tray, this big plastic tray that runs over this. I'm showing you this side for a reason. Uh, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing on the other side. So the only thing I'll show you is if the bracketry is different. Um, but aside from that, it, it is going to be um, a little bit easier on the other side because you don't have this plastic tray up top. There's actually two more that I took out. There was one on the back here. You can see the tab for it. And then I also took the brake line went off. And I just, like I said, I put all those 10 millimeters back into place. So now um, you have a couple different options. You can go ahead and take the eight, I believe they're 18s up there. We'll check here in just a second. We can start loosening those to get the strut out of place. Um, you also have to disconnect the strut at the bottom, but I think I'm gonna go grab my um, small screwdriver and we're gonna pop the lock out here of this so you can see the wired connection here on the bottom and i wish i need a little better light i'm going to try to grab a better light while i'm out over there as well let's do this let's see if we can pop it out with just our finger and yeah, we may be able to do that no i don't think so i'm going to go grab a little small flat blade screwdriver we'll get this unhooked and then we'll unplug it so in order to disconnect this plug, we have to swing this back. That makes sense. And then you have to get underneath it because that is where the actual clip is. And then you can pull it back, but I'm gonna have to use two hands. I'm holding the light with one. Hopefully that makes sense. Underneath this white piece is the tab that releases it. I may be able to do it with one hand. Okay, definitely not. Take a look at this because I struggled a little bit with this guys. So here's what happens once you slide this white clip back, right? That is then your release also. So you'll press that down and that opens it up. And if you look inside of it, you can see it releasing so you can unplug it. I, I struggled with this. I think it was just stuck on this side. Just, you know, this truck's not that old, but anyway, you kind of have to wiggle it back and forth while you're pushing down the white part, but you have to make sure it's all the way back. Anyway, now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to loosening up some of the suspension. So here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna unhook the battery, because I think it's a good idea since we're, we're kind of starting to mess with some electronics here. I think it's a great idea to go ahead and unhook the negative side of the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead, hop up there and do that, and then we will come back down here and look. There's only a few things that we need to take off to get the actual strut out itself. So we gotta take those two holders out of the bottom, so the two bolts out of the bottom, the three out of the top, and then um, we need to loosen up our sway bar. So we'll get that done after I get the battery disconnected. Now the original plan was, hey, I'm gonna push this tray up out of the way. And you can move it a little bit, but not enough. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my 18 inch wrench and I'm gonna start, these guys are not real tight anyway. So I'm gonna grab my wrench and we're gonna take these two outers loose out here. So with the wrench. Um, as the strut starts to drop down, we'll be able to take them off the top. 
there's just not enough room cut out in them in order to get an 18 millimeter in it. Now on the top, this top one we're going to take out from up here, or the back one, I mean, the one closest. You can see I took the uh, little sleeve off that was holding the wiring. And so I'm gonna put my 18 down here at the impact and knock it off first. Now I got that one under the hood out and these, just gonna have to do the old school method here. And guys, I'm sure that you could take out a bunch of plastic clips and get this guy out. In my opinion, it's not worth, because there's several up front here holding it. I see a couple and then a couple back here. I don't think it's gonna be necessary. If it is, obviously we'll have to do it. But you can do this with just a regular 18 inch wrench. It'd be nice if I could get the ratcheting end on this, but I can't, and I probably could, I, maybe I could push it up far enough to get that done. But we're just gonna keep going um, a little bit on each side. And like I said, as this thing drops, we'll be able to take the nut off the end. And I may get to a point where I stop here and move on to another section if I run out of thread. So like if the strut isn't dropping, I think it should. But if it doesn't, then what we will do is we'll move on and start to take maybe the ball joint loose. Gotten to a point where they're not coming down any further. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the 18 on here and we're gonna loosen the sway bar. We got it loose. That'll give us a little more suspension droop. And then I believe these are used to be 15s. They may have changed it on the newer trucks. Yeah, it's smaller. We gotta get the two bolts out of the bottom here. You can see this one on this side. There's one on the other side of the strut. And then I think this will relax some. We'll be able to finish threading off the nut on the top. It is a 15, so we're gonna get the two 15 millimeter bolts out of the bottom of the strut. See the suspension relaxed. Perfect. So that's what we needed. Now we can go ahead and thread the 18s off the top. You can see I got the nut, both those nuts off the top. I was able to push this up a little bit to make clearance and actually get those things off without pulling this out. So now what we need to do is we need to push this lower A arm. I have to put some weight on it to get the strut past this point here, right? So we need it to drop out in that middle section, at least down enough where we can pull it out this direction. Now with all my weight on this brake and trying to use, you know, kind of a leverage or a pry bar to get that thing over, it's not wanting to go. I probably could force it, but I don't want to break anything. And mainly because I just want to keep, I generally keep all my old stuff. So here's what I've started to do. This is an 18 millimeter. We're gonna have to replace the upper A-arm anyway. So in my opinion, guys, we can go ahead, get this loose, and I'm gonna grab my four pound sledge and we're gonna hit it here. Now, could you use a pickle fork? Yes, and technically, since we're not reusing this arm, I don't like using pickle forks because it just completely destroys the boot and um, then you're having to replace the boot. I know we're not gonna be reusing these, but still, in my opinion, don't destroy it if you don't have to. So let's go grab my hammer. Let's whack this a couple times. I think it'll pop right loose. And uh, then that'll give some additional droop. And I think we'll be able to completely get the strut out at that point. Like I said, I got this loose. It's still on there. May take a couple hits. Sometimes I like to hit the arm too. I don't get real crazy on that. These are aluminum. There we go. Just separated. Now, before I take this off, right? So we've got way more room now. I put a jack stand under the bottom of this just so this just doesn't fall and get all crazy. But let's go ahead and take this guy off. It's gonna get real heavy in a second. 
but you can see why I put the jack stand under it. So now it's hitting the jack stand and then we can push this guy up. Wiggle it back and forth and we have the strut out of place. That was a little more work than I thought it would be guys. So I'm going to grab, um, like a bungee cord and I'm going to attempt to hold this maybe up, um, a little closer to things. And the only reason guys is I had a bad experience with a, if you guys look back on the channel, I did a lift kit and the boot was loose. There's not as much room in the boot on a four wheel drive as there is on the older ones. And I'm just afraid I'm going to tear the boot. So I'm going to zip this up, up against the frame somewhere while we work on the upper a arm. Now you can see what I've got here. I've just got this bungee holding this thing while we mess with this arm. So a couple things we're going to have to take loose. Obviously we're going to have to take the bolts out that hold this thing in, but uh, the ride height sensor. Okay. So, we can't take the A-arm off without taking the ride height sensor out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to use my plastic clip tools to get that guy loose up in the top corner there. You can see it. So I'm going to hope sometimes you get lucky and you can use one of these. It's like a ball and socket. You can also use a uh, flat blade screwdriver. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it off on the bottom too. I'll do that here in just a second. But we have to have that off in order to make this um, be free once we get the bolts out. So let me go see what size these are. They look like they're a pretty good size bolt that holds these things in. These are actually 21 millimeter. And so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to see if we can get them loose. The downside is I can't get my impact in there and oh my gosh, those are tight. So I'm gonna go get my breaker bar or breakover bar and we'll get it started there. I just, I don't even think I can get the nut on the end of it loose. Like I said, I can't get my impact in there. No way. Now, one of the cool things about these new trucks is the alignment is actually set from the bottom, which I'm sure every alignment guy in the country is excited about that because he doesn't have to try to reach up through all the suspension to get something loose now or to tighten something up. So we're gonna get this guy started. There we go. I probably could have put a pipe on the other, but we'll try to be a little safer. Got that one started. Now it's starting to spin on the outside here. So we'll put the socket on it and go ahead and run this one out, followed by the exact same thing on the other side. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and loosen it up while we're here. Perfect. Once we get both of the nuts off the end. I'm gonna keep these the same way they came out. I think they're the same size, but just in case. They are same size. We'll see if we can get this thing out of place. It's got an oddball like protective sleeve on this side. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but here's what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna go grab the other one and see if we can match it up. And uh, we're just gonna go right back together with the new one. Let's take a look at these side by side. So hopefully it makes a little bit of sense when you're looking at them, which side goes where, right? So the ball joint's gonna face down, the longer part is gonna go towards the front, the shorter part towards the back, which will make sense because that correlates with our brake line or our ABS line, I mean. So now all we have to do is put this back in place in the same manner that we took that one out. Now, uh, it also says to go ahead and hook up the top of your strut uh, or the top of your spindle. I'm not sure I want to do that yet until we get more of our shock assembly together and ready to go in. That way we have a little more room and a little more clearance to move things around. But I can go ahead and put this in and get those snug. Now we do not want to torque these or tighten them up. Um, you can get them snug, but you need a ton of movement in them because that needs to be torqued down at ride height when we have weight on the suspension. 
So we're gonna put this guy in here. Hopefully get our bolts lined up. Okay, there's one. You may have to grab a rubber mallet, move things around. This actually lined up <laughs> better than any other A-arm I've ever had, to be honest with you. Generally, you have to uh, work them back and forth, but oh man, that's nice. As I said, you gotta put the nut on the end of them and just snug them down. I'm not gonna get real crazy there yet. This one up front, you may have to push back a little bit to get the nut started on it. But there is no washer, guys. I know it's really confusing, but the way these are made, there's no, like, it looks like there's a washer that's part of the old assembly, but there is not a washer that goes on the outer side here, even though it looks like there should be. I had to, I went and double checked the instructions because I was like, man, this, but after looking at the other arm up close, you don't need one. So I'm gonna snug these down just a little bit and then we're gonna move our attention to assembling the strut because we're at that point. Um, I guess we could go ahead and put the upper holder in. We may do that first actually, and then we'll assemble the strut. I wanted you to see how much play this thing had. It's not snug, you're not forcing it, but it's you know tight enough where we can get stuff together now. All the front hardware on this is together, okay? so. You're gonna have a set of six bolts that look about like this, would go through this hole. You're gonna have a set of four, so six, so three for each side, obviously there's three holes here. Uh, you're gonna have a set of four that go, um, two of them are gonna go in the bottom of the strut mount, same on the other side, and then you're gonna have another set of two that's gonna hold the strut to these mounts. Now, there's a little bit of difference in the picture, so the blow apart of this shows these bolts coming in from the top. Um, the actual picture of the installation shows them coming through the bottom. I don't think it necessarily matters to be honest with you, but what you do need to do is we need to put a washer on. And then from there, this, see this notch right there or that cutout? That faces the inside of the truck. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that that's happening. We're gonna put this up into place. If I can find the hole here, there we go. We're gonna put another washer on there and a nylock nut. And we're gonna do that in all three of these. And you can kind of see now, well, I guess you can't see very well, but that is how this is going to set. Obviously our strut, our new coilover is going to hook to this. We're gonna have a similar setup in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and get all three of these in. Now, so you guys know, this is standard hardware. These are a 9 16ths. And we can go ahead and torque this down because it's not, uh, we don't have to load the weight up on the sh upper mount in order for that to happen. Now this, yes, but not this mount. So 9 16 I'm gonna go ahead, we need to torque these to 45 foot pounds. So there's three of them. Obviously guys, you're gonna have to have a wrench up top uh, while you're torquing it down, but let's go ahead, get those torqued and then we'll move on to the bottom mount. Now we're moving on to the lower strut mount. So obviously we're gonna have to have something like this to hold the bottom of it. Uh, so, and I say strut mount, it's a coilover. Anyway, so these are side specific guys. So when you're looking at these, this ear right here, you can see that. Okay, that goes towards the inside. Well, with that on the inside, you need the two holes on the back or the single hole on the front. And so that is going to set in this cavity right here. And it'll make sense because if you tried to put the other one here, nothing would line up. Once we do that, these are a different size bolt. Like I said, all the front bolts come together. We're gonna to put a washer on and we're gonna put this in from the top side. Nice fit there, not a ton of slop. So the sizing's good. Uh, same thing on the other side. And then we've got washers and lock nuts or nylock nuts for the bottom. And then this size did switch to 5 8 So you're gonna need a 5 8 wrench and probably actually you're gonna need a socket. Well, you may be able to get a wrench on the bottom side. Once we got these in, you can see we've got them in there. I ran them down a little bit with the impact, but they need to be torqued to 70 foot pounds. We can go ahead and torque these as well. 
this point we need to do a little strut assembly. Um, I'm just kind of reading through the instructions as I go. I've read them a couple times and they make sense, but um, the spring, just because, I don't know, it probably doesn't matter which goes where, but what we need to start with is we need to start with our adjuster sleeve. So you can see it's got this guy in it. Don't take that out yet, okay? See that, it's separating it. We're gonna put this, and guys, so you know, I don't know if they've changed the color. In the picture, this is more silver, but there is a part number on the top, so make sure that you're putting the right one. I mean, you get four of these, um, and they are threaded. They're both threaded on the bottom, so it could be easy to put the back ones in the front. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the bottom. You can see how it screws on, but we need one of these torsion bearings on there as well. So that's gonna, believe me guys, if you don't have that and you try to turn this with um, <laughs> with the spring on it, it's gonna be fun, let me tell you. Just from past experience. All right, so once we get that on, we can go ahead and put the spring on top of it. Now, look, you're gonna have to, so see how we got the spring on? We're gonna have to take, I'm gonna set this one aside. We're gonna have to take this guy off, right? Cause that's gonna be in the way of us getting our top mount on, which is held on with this clip right here, this metal clip. The other thing we're gonna have to do though, is we need to put another one of these guys on. So you'll have one for the top and the bottom. That sleeve will set right here. But you can see we can't get this on. So we need to take this out. Now, what fits it the best in my opinion is a T10, but it specifically says in the instructions, before the upper spring can be mounted, screw the adjuster knob on the upper eye to the firmest setting, which is clockwise, all right? So let's go all the way to clockwise, which is right there, so it's stopped. All right, so once we've done that, then remove the knob by holding it. So we're gonna hold that out, outer knob and remove the screw. So the screw in the center here. Let's take this guy out, but we need to hold the knob while we do it. Okay, take the screw out, take the knob off. I don't think we can get any more of that off than we don't need to. Okay, perfect. So now, and kind of set this in here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put this knob back on because it makes me crazy, and I'm sure it's keyed a certain way. It is. So it's only gonna go on one way, like that. Let's put it back in there, and I'm gonna hold it so it doesn't turn. It should, it should go the same way, but. We're still good. Now we need to push our clip into place, which that may be fun. Um, I'm wondering if we should have done that while we had the knob off actually, probably so. Let's see what it says here. Uh, once the knob is removed, put the Delrin bushing on, next slide the upper spring mount on over the eyelet, install the upper spring mount retainer clip into the groove, then reinstall adjuster okay so there you go guys you should read further in the instructions before you do like me not a big deal take it back off now we'll see if we can get this guy over all this mess and we're not really concerned all right that's perfect now we can put it back on um, we're not really concerned with the spring slack right now. Don't concern yourself with that just yet. And I'm going to do this to the other one off camera so you guys don't watch me struggle. Now, we've got that in place. What we need to do is we need to install the locking screw into the adjuster nut before setting the pinion preload okay so that's the this guy here and i'm gonna go have to find that's a hex 
So let me go find the hex that actually fits this, but this is gonna go in that bottom right here. And then we'll try to set the preload. What fits it the best, in my opinion, is a four millimeter. So we're gonna get this guy in here. And in bold print, guys, it says, to install that before. So it says right here in bold, install the locking screw in the adjuster nut before setting the spring preload. Do not tighten until the spring preload has been set. So I'm not planning on, I'm gonna take this little holder out, little space keeper, and we're gonna get that adjusted. And when it, when it says preload, what's gonna happen is, we're going to, I'm just going to turn it upside down for now. Okay. We're going to make sure this stuff lines up. So our torsion bearing and all that, we're going to turn it upside down just because it's easier to handle. We're going to screw this thing down until we get to that spring where it's not like wobbling around, if that makes sense. And we're going to try to line up that bottom torsion as well. And so once we do that, right, so we don't have, and eh, we can go a little further. There we go. See how that's tight now, it's not moving around. So then it says to set the preload to a half an inch. So we're gonna measure, what we're gonna measure here is we're gonna measure what we've got there and we're gonna add a half an inch to that. So that's. That's setting the preload on this guy. So we're gonna do that off camera because uh, it's gonna, we're probably gonna have to hold it pretty still while we do it. Uh, may have some help here doing that. And then once we do that, then we should have that set and we should be able to go ahead and tighten this. But it, it does say to not tighten it until the preload has been set. So here's what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I'm gonna measure from the flat right here to here, and then I'm gonna go up a half an inch. Once we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. This is a little bit different from coilovers you see me use in the past on this channel because they have a adjuster and then they have a jam nut that runs up against it. This four millimeter acts as a jam nut. So once you get it set into the position you want, then you tighten up what would essentially be kind of like a jam nut. That's the reason they're saying, if you're gonna be doing any adjusting here, you need to make sure that this is loose and you don't wanna tighten it and then try to spin it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go measure what I've got here and it may be different depending on your application. Um, I don't know if yours is gonna run up. I'm just ran it until I couldn't kind of spin the spring freely without really trying. This is gonna be adjusted anyway. So this isn't as important as getting some load on it so you have everything kind of crunched up where it goes and in its place. Now, if you're having trouble, it does come with a spanner wrench is what I would call it, that goes on this guy. So that makes life a little easier trying to adjust that in the manner you want it to go, especially uh, to get this initial half inch. Um, it's gonna be a little tough to do without having this. You can get it a little ways, but mine was, um, two and seven sixteenths. So I'm going to go up to three and a sixteenth to get us at that half inch mark. And I'm just going to duplicate that on the other side, if that makes sense. And then we'll be ready to put these guys in. He went ahead and assembled the other one. So I just got to adjust it. Downside is this thing Kind of moves around on you. I've always hated like scratch and stuff, but this one seems pretty soft. Get a measurement here. Ooh, we're really, really close. Another probably eighth of an inch or so to go. sixteenth of an inch and then we will be set like I won't show you guys the other side get it adjusted and uh, then I'm excited because we'll be able to put them in last thing we need to do now that we've got it to the length that we need 
is we need to go ahead and run this down. And I'm just gonna run it down by hand for now because chances are we will be adjusting it later. And guys, I really think if you make any adjustments, do not forget to undo that, okay? Now for the most exciting part, which is putting this thing in here. And so guys, obviously we can't just put it in there without anything. This comes with a couple aluminum sleeves that go on the bottom here. So how this works, and if you guys watch my video on my 55, you saw me put these in. These guys sandwich in the bottom like that. And then we will put it in that bottom mount, okay, with the supplied hardware. You'll have washer, bolt, nut, another nylock nut, and another washer. And the same thing happens in the top. So we're gonna have to do the same thing in the top as well. So what I'll probably do is we'll start with the top actually, because these things don't just stay in, they'll fall out when you go to um, take this apart, if that makes sense. Let's see if we can get it in here with my bungee cord in the way. I think we probably can. go and I don't think it necessarily matters which way the bolt goes guys you can put it um, I put mine facing the front I may look at the instructions see how they've got theirs I may put it just the way the instructions but it, it shouldn't matter which way it actually goes they actually have one going one way and one going the other in the instructions so it definitely doesn't matter here's what I will tell you guys though you know how I am about being OCD I just want to make sure that this one, if this one's facing forward on this side, it needs to be facing forward on the other. Same thing on the bottom. Um, there's nothing that would really interfere. I think I'd rather have the bottom um, facing forward as well though, because the CV shaft is pretty close. But in order to get this the rest of the way in place, I need to unthread our ball joint stud here. Okay. And I'm going to go grab my jack and I'm going to kind of lift the bottom of this lower a arm so we can kind of start lining things up and i don't have this you know i can hold this while it's coming up and uh, line this up line our sway bar in link up and then line this up at all the same time okay i've started to lift this into place so now we can take our bungee cord out and i've got everything somewhat lined up at the same time I think the bungee cord helped. Maybe not. So we gotta come a little bit further up, but we also need to get our little aluminum sleeves in here. You're gonna have a little less room than you would normally have um, on a four wheel drive versus let's say a two wheel drive. out there so now like I said I think I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna have them all facing the same direction a little a little close here with the I think I like that better just because of it being four-wheel drive so we'll get this on here and we'll come back and tighten this up later, but guys, I wanna show you up top here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple things back in place. This ball joint, upper ball joint, we'll go ahead and get it started. And this one has a cotter pin that we have to put in. We'll start to snug it down. I don't. I doubt that it's 18 like the other one was, but it'd sure be cool if it was. It'd be even cooler if it didn't start to spin like most of them do. All right, that's good. The other thing I want to line. I lined up while this was all coming together is the um, sway bar end link because. Otherwise, I don't think you could get it in unless you have both sides unhooked, but we're at the point, guys, where we can start to torque stuff down and uh, 
kind of see what we've got. We can also, we'll come back here in a second and talk about the brake lines um, or the ABS lines. Obviously we can put these back in place, you know, where they came out. But this one back here, I want to show you something we've got to do to it real quick. Now we're going to start right here torquing this to 50 foot pounds. And I do have some pressure up against this. I generally like to tighten these with some pressure on them. Now you may have to swing a little past 50 in order to get your cotter pin to line up. Just have to see what we've got. Actually, huh, that never happens. Dead on. So we need to find one that fits it. I'm assuming that in the box there's probably one, but for some reason my kit did not have one in it but it could be in the bottom of a box somewhere. Want to make sure that we get one that fits right and we'll bend that. I think that one's good. Make sure. Now that we've got that tightened and our cotter pin in, I do need to put a grease fitting up top here. So we need to go ahead and do that. It doesn't ship with it, which is makes sense because they break off relatively easy. So we'll get that threaded in and snug down, but we need to tighten our upper and lower here. So the, the bolts that we put in that hold this thing in place. The other thing guys is make sure your adjuster is all the way out or facing out and not in and make it really hard to adjust if it were facing in. Um, but we need to tighten the upper up here and the lower to 75 foot pounds. This guy right here, right? So they incorporated this to set in the factory location. So we're gonna grab the 10 millimeter. I did go ahead and tighten, and guys, I just did these hand tight. I'm right-handed, so I tighten them left-handed. I think it's like inch pounds, and I believe it actually says, I'll read it off to you in a minute on this, but obviously this isn't gonna work because it has this tab on it, this little ear that's supposed to set in a hole. So we're gonna have to bend that. So just take a pair of pliers and bend that flat, and then we'll grab our 10 millimeter and get that snug that guy tightened down it's actually 92 inch pounds so that's what the, this one goes to and all the ones that go into the um, actual spindle 92 inch pounds uh, if you don't have an inch pound gun guys just don't over tighten it. it it's easy to snap the heads off these so we are complete with everything except the sway bar end link I didn't tighten that back up because I need to go do the other side real quick and I don't like to tighten that until I've got a little bit on the suspension and I may need to move the sway bar kind of up and down to finish the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and finish the other side. It's by far easier guys, cause like I said, it doesn't have this to contend with, this up top. And uh, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna address, like I'm gonna take this other arm off. I need to actually just go ahead and do that. I'd like to not break that, so maybe we'll wait until I get something to pry against. So I'm not, I mean, that's just plastic. But I want to take this off and have that arm just kind of up. I don't, I don't think it's going to interfere. We may have to zip tie that thing down or something, actually, to keep it out of the way. I'm afraid that the A-arm in the suspension travel could hit that. But we need to address... Um, aside from the sway bar end link, which I'll talk about torque specs when I come back, but we need to address this, right? So we obviously have two plugs that are not going to be operational. This one was the ride height sensor from the front, and this one was your um, shock control, which the old school, like on the Yukon that I have, comes in from the top. Now they plug into the side, as you saw. But we need to do something with that because obviously we're not going to have the ability to use this stuff anymore. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to show you that here in just one second. So let me go whip out the other side and then we'll be back to take care of this stuff. Now that we have the other side complete. Um, okay, so I, by the way, I found the grease fitting and the cotter keys. They were in the bag. I just didn't notice them. So we need to do a couple things. I went ahead and lifted the bottom of the A-arm on the other side and tightened up our upper um, a arm bolts. So I'm going to do the same over here, but before we do that, uh, we need to look at a couple things. For one, the sway bar end link, now that we're done with the other side, I'm going to put some pressure. I'm going to use my jack underneath here and I'm going to lift this up. We're going to torque this down to 17 foot pounds. Uh, I found that actually online. It's not in the instructions, but guys, 17 foot pounds, not a lot there really. 
So onto this side, obviously this thing had an electronic shock on it. We're not gonna be reusing that, right? So this doesn't have any electronic plugins. And so our new pieces, and I'm gonna show you both of them here in a minute, but we need to pop these off because it doesn't fit the same manner that the other ones did. So I'm gonna use my little tool here and pop these things off of the A-arm. This one I'll have to cut. This is a zip tie holder, which is kind of neat. But we need to slide two things loose, one being this red clip, if you guys can see that one there, and this red clip. Both of these are locks. Once we slide them out, we can unplug them. And I'll show you what we're gonna be using um, as far as a new plug. I'm gonna have to have two hands for this, but we need to get both these locks slid down and out of place. Once we do that, then we will be able to push and unplug both this one that went to the shock. And I am gonna cut that off. This piece will be completely gone. And this one here, which goes to the ride height sensor. Now that we got those unplugged, which will be two of the hardest things you do on this entire install. Okay, so this is not from Ride Tech. This comes from Shock Deletes. And guys, this thing is massive. So this is the one that actually plugs into the smaller plug that went to the shock. Apparently the newer versions of these trucks have a ton of voltage that go through this. Now, they specifically said, unless you're gonna do these right now, so unless you're gonna program them, don't put them in yet. So I think I'm gonna have to drive to a buddy shop. You have to use like a snap-on or a GM tool to realign these. And I'll list their link in the description down below, but this is a completely separate deal altogether. So it is, it's kind of a pain. But what we can go ahead and do is plug this one in. So this is the ride height sensor. Basically it tricks it. You are gonna plug this in until you hear it snap. Did you guys hear that? That means we are solid, it's in, right? So once that's in, then we can put our lock back in and I'm going to zip tie it with this arm down to this area right here. And then we'll come back later. I'm not concerned about this since we can't really do much right now. I may be able to borrow a buddy scanner and I'll take you guys through that process. But for now, and I'm not even sure yet, I'm gonna talk to them about mounting this because obviously it gets warm, I'm assuming. That's why it's got that heat sink on it. Uh, so we're gonna see about maybe mounting it here with some self-tapping screws. I don't know. We're just gonna have to figure something out. But for now, let's go ahead and get this zip tied up with this, and then I'm going to lift this up and have my son help me torque these upper A-arms. I know it says to put the wheel back on, but if we get underneath the A-arm here, we'll be able to lift it up and torque that. This is what they're talking about when they mean you need weight on this. You can't tighten this upper A-arm if it doesn't have weight on it, because if you do, you're gonna wreck the bushings, right? So if you tighten it when it's in full droop, then the first time you hit a bump, it's gonna push it past that and just wreck those bushings. So that's why you need to do that with it loaded. I generally like to torque these down when it's loaded too, so I did have a little pressure on that. That's not as imperative. We also need to put grease in this, of course, guys, but you can see what I've done here, zip tying this up with the opening facing down to try to keep moisture from just setting in it. Uh, I don't, they're pretty well sealed up, but yeah. Anyway, like I said, we'll come back and do this guy. I did put 17 foot pounds on the sway bar, but now we need to torque this down up here. So these go to 140 foot pounds. So you're gonna have to put your 21 here and a small 21 here, same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna have my son come out here and help me hold um, the wrench while I'm getting this torqued down because it does 140 is, especially at this angle, is kind of tough to do. At this point, we've got grease in it. We've got 140 on those top ones. You can see we've relaxed the suspension. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and put the wheels back on and we're gonna set the front down and we're gonna step back and take a look and see what we've got. Um, I think we'll probably see some drop. I don't know how much because the suspension, the way it, we may have to roll it back and forth. The battery's still unhooked. Uh, I'm not gonna hook up the battery until we're ready to go with those other pieces that I showed you, the ones that look like little amplifiers. Like I said, I'm gonna talk to them and see best way to mount those. But I think at this point, we may shift our attention to the back and come back because there's, we're gonna use two of those amplifier looking things in the back as well. So let's get it, get the wheel back on, set it down. We can kind of gauge maybe how much drop we got in the front, at least for now. I'm letting him do some work here. I'm worn out. Anyway, got one side on the ground. 
and I haven't torqued the wheels, obviously. Um, we're probably gonna take it back off to make adjustments, so I've just got them snugged up by hand. I'll What's do going it. on? Just <laughs> go I'll already, do it. jeez. Let's get off the jack stand and get that jack stand out of there. Oh, you're off the jack stand. How far are you gonna get it? Don't touch the ceiling. Don't touch the ceiling. Slammed? Probably not. Yeah. Oh, it's lower. It's definitely lower. It's not slammed, but it's lower. All right, we may jump up and down the front end a little bit. Cam, do you think it? Do you think it looks lower? Yeah. It does. All right, so I just put a tape measure on it just because curiosity, right? So 34, 35 and three quarters is where we started. We're at 34 and a half right now. Now I have not rolled it back and forth. Like I said, the battery's still unhooked. I'm going to leave it unhooked. I'm not going to tweak with anything until we can move it back and forth and we get the back done. So at this point we got the front on the ground. Um, we already got an, in, what's that? An inch and a quarter of drop. It definitely looks lower, but let's get to the back, start there. And once we get the back finished, it's pretty stationary. So there's not a lot that, as far as movement up and down, uh, you're not gonna see a lot of that. You're gonna see um, that that doesn't really have to settle in the back. The front, because we lay the wheels down, they kind of move one way or the other, either in or out. That's why you don't really know until you kind of roll it back and forth. Now that we are onto the back, I've got the back off the ground. I do think it's a good idea to put some rubber um, chalk, wheel chocks in the front. That's, I've got them on both sides just to keep it from rolling forward. I did push it forward a little bit. I actually had to hook up the battery to do that. And uh, now we've got the back off the ground. So what I've done is I have, from the center of the differential there, lifted it up. And then guys, you do have to put these up on the frame. The frame starts to bend up right here. And so I've got them right at the flattest part, um, the furthest back that you can get them without it obviously going into a curve. So now, we need to, I'm gonna go ahead and take the wheels off uh, just to give me a little bit more clearance and room. So let's get the wheels off first. That's a seven eighths. I won't show you guys that. Then we will get under the truck and see what we need to do next. Now that we've got the wheels off, the very first thing we need to do is we need to take the shocks off. Now the shocks are 21 millimeter. So you're gonna have to keep this hardware that you see here. And then the top actually threads in um, to an, a threaded nut, I believe. Oh, maybe there's a nut on the other end, but it's 21 up top as well. But before we do that, I'd like to go ahead and unplug the shock because this does have uh, sensors in the back as well. So it has adaptive ride in the back as well as the front, which kind of sucks. And then there actually is one ride height sensor and I'll show you guys that on the other side here in a minute, but let's get the, the lock shoved out on this guy, get it unplugged, and then we'll take our 21 out here and up top. I've got that shock out. Like I said, I took the two 21 millimeters and unplugged it, but I wanna show you guys something that's gonna fight you front and back the entire time. And that is the plugs on those um, shocks, right? I spent probably 30 minutes on each one, except this one over here. And so I wanna show you how they unplug and how this works. So let's see if I can get you. So once you, set the light down here find a good spot for it so to unplug these you have a white safety clip I'm gonna move my light a little closer here so you can see what I'm talking about so you see this white safety clip right here obviously that keeps it plugged in so this thing I don't even know if it'll go in okay it's not going to um, thought maybe I could get it to slide in it's got to be plugged in to slide in. So this safety clip comes out and that piece right there is your leverage to push on and pull this plug out. Now, here's what I will tell you. The other side was completely caked in dirt and it took me forever to get the thing out. So it might not be a bad idea to get a, some like your compressor and a blower and blow this all out. Try to get all the gunk out of it, blow in these areas here and then slide that clip out and push on it. But you, I'm telling you guys, it fought me like crazy. So now that we've got both sides plugs out, the other side is the one that gave me fits. Let's go ahead and get this 21 millimeter out 
and the one on the top. I'm using a long extension on the top, obviously down here, 21 millimeter wrench on one side, 21 on the 21 socket on the other. So same situation on the only ride height sensor you have, which is on the driver's side. Look at all the dirt built up right there. So what happens is you break the plastic retainer trying to get it out because it's stuck. I, I blew it out first um, and it's still all that dirt and debris. Look at that. So it's not a big deal. I used the pick to get in there and um, pick the rest of that out and it's still going to lock. I mean, the lock is still there. It's just the little tab that you use to push it down is broken. But you guys, this is, like I said, this is the toughest part of this whole ordeal. So now that we've got that loose, we can take this guy off. So the little socket, the ball and socket, you can take it off down here as well, but we can push this off and we'll probably be taking this off at some other point, but you can push on one side of this and it releases a little plastic pin. I'm probably gonna have to use both hands, but if you push that plastic pin through, then this thing will just slide right off. And we'll get it out of the way for now, at least have that down. I don't know what I'm gonna do here because this is like, the way this is put into the frame, if you take that 10 millimeter off, the bracket doesn't wanna come off. It's like, it's, it's almost like it is splined and they push that on from the factory. So I don't know, we'll just kind of experiment. I don't think it's necessarily gonna be in the way, but if it looks like it's gonna be, obviously we're gonna to have to remove it. I actually was able to get this off. So if you take the 10 millimeter off, you can see the splines, but then it just sets down in this divot. So I had to wiggle it back and forth to get it off the splines, but it is out. And we'll zip tie this up with a new ride uh, sensor here after a while. But now we can continue that we've got all this stuff out of the way. Next step is we need to remove the U-bolts. So here's what I generally do. So obviously we've got it supported with jack stands up front. I like to put a jack stand on the drive shaft. Just maybe like that and here's why when we undo this this rear end is going to want to roll forward um, sometimes it wants to roll backwards sometimes forward i've still got support under the rear end right with the jack but when we take these 21 millimeters loose and pull these u-bolts off that rear end's completely loose at that point and we don't want it to get out of control we don't want it to be rocking back and forth. It would even be, if I had another set of jack stands, which I don't, unfortunately, I'd probably put a set on either side just down a little as well. But I think we can maintain what we've got here um, with just keeping the jack in place, but we'll just have to see. But next step is to use your impact, get these 21 millimeters off, all four on this side and the four on the other side. Got those things off there. So now, you may have to get a pry bar and uh, loosen this up. Sometimes it's got years of dirt and God, this thing must have been in a sandy environment. And then we can pull the U-bolts out of the top and we're not going to be reusing these. The kit comes with new ones. So once we do that on both sides, then we should be almost ready to start taking the leaf springs loose. Got both sides loose, as you can see, and then I let the jack down a little, and you can see why I put my jack stand right there. Nobody ever tells you that, but believe me, have one. Makes sense. Now, look, we don't want to put a ton of pressure on our lines. You can see um, that's just a vent tube that's got the most pressure on it, but the rest of them are looking like they're in good shape. We're not putting any more on it than we need. I, dro I dropped it down just a little bit to the point where I felt comfortable with the pressure that was on the brake lines. But now guys, we need to take the leaf pack out. Now, the one cool thing about these newer trucks, well, I say cool, this um, muffler slash resonator, whatever that comes into the back, it kind of gets in the way with the hanger as far as getting the bolts out. We're gonna have to take out what looks like a 13 millimeter right here that holds this hanger because that little pocket right there you can see the bolt sticking through. We won't be able to get the bottom of our shackle out if we leave that in place. So I'm gonna take that out on both sides. But one really cool thing is before on the older trucks, you had to take the gas tank out in order to get this lower leaf spring bolt out. Well, as you can see now, they've accommodated an opening in the frame 
to allow you to get this out without having to take all that loose, which is really, really nice because before you'd have to loosen your gas tank and move it over. So I don't know what sizes these are yet. I'll, I'll let you guys know here in just a second, but I think that's a 13 back there. And if you don't have this exhaust, I'm not sure you'll have this problem. I don't know if that this is where they all tie up, uh, but if not, um, you won't have to do that part, but I think that's a 13 right there. We'll get that out, get it out of the way. And then this should be a 21 millimeter in the back. This is a look of one of those taken off. It's actually a 15 millimeter and it comes right off and the other side comes in from the other direction. So from the outside, uh, but we got that, got that out of the way. And then I was able to get a 21 up in the pocket and then he held the wrench on the outside and we're to a point where I can't get it any further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead at this point and loosen the front. And uh, like I said, I don't remember what, they're bigger than a 21. So we'll have to see what size they are. And once we get the front loose, we'll be able to move it back and forth and thread our bolts out, I believe. So on the front side of this, a 15 16 bits it. I'm sure it's metric, but 15 16 works. So I've got a deep 15 16 in the pocket with a ratchet on it. And then on the other end, I'm using a breaker bar, but then I'm switching over to my other ratchet so we can kind of work this way out. Um, I'm using a shorter 15 16 on this side because obviously it runs into the bed. So we'll just have to keep working back and forth trying to get that thing out. Um, the nut is on the inside in the pocket, which is fine. It's just a little different than normal. Uh, but other than that, I think we can work this um, to the point where we get here. And I think we'll have enough room to slide it in between the bed here is what I'm hoping because it, I know it's pretty long. Well, a couple things we discovered here. Um, one on the inside is this guy. That makes sense why it wasn't spinning because it's supposed to be held stationary. Uh, but the other thing is you can see I'm out of room here. So what I'm doing is I'm using a T30. And I don't know if the non-carbon fiber beds have this option. But I'm using a T30 to take this bottom bolt out so we can move this guy over enough to get the bolt completely out of the pocket. Now you may need a little help here. Um, I had him wiggling this back and forth now that that bolt's out of the front. You can see it laying on the ground down there. But I had him wiggling it back and forth so I could get that back bolt out. So now they're both out. I've got the other one sitting right there. And try to remember which direction they go in. Here's another thing, guys. Try to set these in a manner where you don't get them confused because they are side specific and there's a front and back specific. So at this point, we're gonna to attempt to pull this leaf spring out by leaning it forward in the front, pushing it kind of under the truck a little bit, and then pulling it out from, you know, out here where we can work on it because there's a couple things that we need to do. Uh, we need to reverse this center pin. We'll talk more about that once we get it out. So after we get this one out, I'm gonna go do the exact same thing on the other side using the exact same tools. And then we can move on to what we need to do to the leaf springs. And we gotta cut some stuff. There's, there's quite a bit more to do here. Did the exact same thing on the other side, got that one out. So we have both leaf springs out and don't mix them up. But now see this 13 right here that holds the brake line. We need to take that out on both sides. And we need to keep this because we're gonna reuse this. All right, so do this exact same thing on the other side. I'm guessing because of the saddle, it'll hook to the back of the saddle. They've got it um, made that way. So at this point, we're gonna have to do some cutting. Let me move my leaf spring up a little. We're gonna have to cut our old bump stop off. There's no way around it, guys. We're gonna be moving the axle to obviously the top side of the leaf pack. That's why we had to pull the leaves out. And in order to do that, I'm just going to use my grinder my with actually my wireless or sorry, cordless grinder, my DeWalt grinder and a cutoff disc. And we're going to try to cut that, um, you know, don't get crazy. I'm going to start probably right here cutting. And generally how I do this is I'll cut the sides, I'll cut the front and then I'll kind of bend it down with a pry bar and I'll just cut in, in and out on this process. I don't wanna show you guys like real time because it completely destroys my screen on my GoPro, but I'll probably have some grinding afterwards and then we'll have to touch it up with some paint or something, but we do need to get that out of place. Let's take a look at my cuts now. So you can see I've cut along the front, cut along both sides. 
And so what I like to do at this point, and I'm just using, obviously use some something to protect you, but I'm just using my cutoff wheel on my wireless grinder. So I'm gonna hit this. Just like that. Now, could you get underneath and grind? Absolutely. I hate grinding over my head though. So, um, and actually guys, I think we could probably knock that back the other way and keep going back and forth. But I'm gonna put the uh, cutoff wheel up in there, trim that up, and then we'll be able to knock that off. Of course, I'm gonna go back and clean this up with a, um, probably a flap disc. I don't know if I'm gonna try to get this completely flat, flush on the frame. I noticed in the picture, they did a really, really good job in the installation kit um, taking theirs off. But I think I'll clean it up a little bit. And this undercoating, man, it just wrecks those flap wheels. Got that thing off there. And I've been grinding quite a bit with the flap wheel. Like I said, guys, this rubberized coating, man, it just absolutely destroys a flap wheel. Look at that. There's not much flap wheel left because that stuff gets on there. So I like using the flap wheel the best. I may switch over to a grinding disc and do some grinding a little more, but I'm happy with that. Um, you know, once you touch that up with some, maybe some rubberized undercoating or even some black, it's gonna look pretty good. So I think I can probably live with that. I did take the time to put a little bit of black paint on this. I didn't even go as crazy on this side as I went on the other side. So you can still see, you know, a little bit of it when you're looking down here, but guys, look, you can spend hours and hours trying to make that completely flat. The downside is you get off, if you get off a little bit, you're gonna go into the frame. So in my opinion, cut it to where it's nice and level. That's what we're needing to do. Um, if you're going for aesthetics, you're gonna have to grind that in a while. But we're finished with that. Now we're gonna move over to the leaf springs because we need to reverse that centering pin. So the center pin that's in the middle of this. So I'm gonna go grab some tools. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that next. So in order to reverse this pin, which is required, you need a 15 millimeter. Sometimes this other side spins, but you'll notice that I've got a couple set of pliers, right? These on both sides, because we wanna keep the spring together. And then it's a 15 millimeter. Chances are we probably should put a little WD-40 on it, but I'm hoping as new as this truck is, it'll bust loose, we'll see. Perfect. Can't beat that. So we need to take this pin out. Sometimes easier said than done. And we need to just put it through the other way. You may have to grab a screwdriver and knock it through. Or a center punch even. Um, drive it the rest of the way through. So once you get it out of there, I just use the hammer to just tap it. We need to put it through the other direction. And you notice that I took this upper piece off. That needs to come off. Put it back in here. And then I'm going to use the impact to snug it back down. I'm going to have to pull it a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna have to put my vice grips back on the other side to make this happen. There we go. We need to do this exact same thing to the other side too. Once we have those flipped over, those centering pins, we need to take off this guy. And one thing you need to keep in mind is the direction that it's going. So it needs to go the same way when we put it back in. So as you can see, it's pointing out towards the outside of the truck. This is a 21 millimeter also. We're gonna knock it off real quick. We're gonna do that on both sides. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna just put these back together and set them aside. I'm gonna go run and do the other side real quick. Once we get that accomplished, there are three bolts on the top of the differential here. I'm gonna try to hang my light, show you guys what I'm talking about. So there's one right here in the front, and then there's two. There's one here kind of 
in the middle and then one on the other side. Those are 13 millimeter. And what we're attempting to do is get the brake bracket, so the brake line bracket loose from the rear end. So I'm gonna use my 13 millimeter on my impact, well, on my ratchet, I suppose, and uh, get those loose. And then there's new brackets to help get that back into place. So I'll show you those here as soon as we get these out. Keep these 13 millimeters because we are going to need them to put the new bracket in place. Once we do that, you've got these brackets, all right? So one has a slotted end. The other has a perfect circle, right? So you can see the slotted end. This is essentially what they're trying to accomplish. This, so the non-slotted end, which by the way, I had to open up the hole just a little bit because the bolt, the stock bolt wouldn't go through it. That is where you're putting the stock bolt and it's gonna face this way. So it's gonna push that bracket that we just took loose towards the front of the truck. So you're gonna use your factory hardware, put it back in with this in place. And then it comes with new hardware to put, so you have a washer and a nylock nut that's gonna move the bracket into this location. So essentially we're moving it, you can see what it's, what it's accomplishing. It's moving it down and forward, but the slotted end goes forward. So we're calling an audible here, guys. Um, here's the situation. This, we're gonna have to bend this brake line quite a bit in order to make that happen. The instructions are showing a 10 bolt. This is a 12 bolt. So on the 10 bolt, it's a little bit different the way that mounts. It actually is bolted to the rear different, like the diff cover, and it would technically move it differently. So we're gonna take these off. I'm gonna put the lines right back where they came off. So disregard this step. I'm gonna talk to Ride Tech and see what they think about that. Like I said, their instructions are showing a 10 bolt. So the 12 bolt is a little bit different. I don't think when I look at this, we're not going that low. So I don't think we're gonna have an issue with brake lines hitting anything. It's something I can always come back and adjust later if I think it's gonna be a problem once we get the leaf springs in. So at this point, I'm gonna put all three of those right back where they were and take those brackets out all together. Next step is we're gonna go ahead and put our new shackles on. They need to face the following way. So see this? And we need to put the bolt back in the same way it came out. That's probably gonna fall off. And I'm using the bottom hole. This is where your adjustment is, but I want it the lowest it'll go on this, with this kit. So we're putting the bolt right back in the way we took it out and no need to snug it down right now because we'll do that with weight on the suspension of the truck. Now we're gonna move on to the front bracket that bolts to the frame that holds the front of the leaf spring. It's, it's a little bit different. It doesn't actually go back in the same pocket. Here is the next piece to this puzzle, and that is the new mount for the front of the leaf spring. So normally, guys, what would happen is you would just put your axle on the bottom side of the rear end, and that would be it. But this kit comes with kind of a cool feature incorporated in this, but what we're gonna do is you have a driver and a passenger side. So see the D on this one for driver. Obviously the passenger is the passenger and the, see this angle right here on it? That points towards the outside. So this is gonna go up in the stock location, right? So this right here. And then we're gonna use our OEM bolt that came out of our leaf spring to go through this and bolt that down. There's also a bolt that goes in the top, which you should have a pre-existing hole up there. You guys see that? And you have access to the top. So we're gonna bolt that in with the hardware included right here. But what I was gonna tell you is one of the neat things, you could see I went ahead and put my spacer in there. I chose not to opt um, just because, you know, the how I'm using this truck. They have a traction bar option that bolts in that location. So at this point, if you're using that option, which is awesome that they incorporate this in there, you would actually put that in there instead of the spacer. If you're not using that, you have to put the spacer in, otherwise you would squish this and it would cause issues, right? So you have to have that spacer in there or the traction bar. Uh, the traction bar then would hook to the rear end, which is incorporated in a completely different saddle and different setup than what we are using. You can always upgrade to that later, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one put in and then we'll step back and take a look at it installed. Like I said, we're using the factory bolt 
and the nut on the inside to install this and then we'll get that other nut in from the for going through the top now you can see we've got the factory bolt and in there this guy got the sleeve in there spacer and then we've got the bolt up top so you do have access like i said from the top to get a 5 8 that's what size it is so at this point it says to torque that down to 70 foot pounds and that is the bolt that went the 5 8 it does not say to tighten this yet so i imagine we should probably leave it for now um, I think that if you, it could potentially cause you issues getting your leaf spring in the bottom. So we'll go ahead and torque that down. Now, once we have these in place on both sides, see the P for passenger, we were on the driver's side earlier. I've got that torque to 70 and that's the one that goes up through the top. Now we're going to take this that comes with the kit and we're gonna put it through here with the leaf spring. So the front of the leaf spring, it kind of sucks because it's gonna be a, kind of in my way but make sure you got the front of the leaf spring, right? Remember we put the shackle on the back. I think that's part of the reason they have you go ahead and do that. But we'll get it up into place and we're just putting the back end right, or sorry, the front end right now. We're gonna run this bolt through. You don't have to worry about the nut and the other washer. We're just using this for alignment reasons because there is a brace that braces this piece. And I'm gonna show you that because that's the next piece that we need to install. But before we do that, we need to get the leaf spring up in there, this bolt in there securing it. Now our next pieces to go in are these guys. And so what these do is these act as a brace. Since, you know, it's a pretty, it's pretty thick metal here and it'd probably be fine, but they wanted the additional brace on the back side of this. So these are side specific, but this hole here in the center lines up with the hole on the bolt, kind of like that. So this, that's the way that thing sets up in there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So here's my issue. Um, when I push, you can see I've got the bolt out a little bit. When I have the bolts a little further in, so let's say like right there, there's a little bit of problem getting it in place because of the coating on the frame. Um, I could get it in there, but it was just, it was kind of bound up. But we need to get this in place because once we get it in place, we're gonna line up. As a matter of fact, I may do this, go ahead and put it in place, but we're gonna line it up with this opening right here being lined up with that corresponding opening on the very back. We're gonna have to mark it, and then we're gonna have to drill and put a nut, uh, basically a thread, threaded nut, a nut cert in the frame. So I'm gonna get it up into place, and then I'll show you guys before we mark it kind of what we're looking at. Here's what we've got. So what I did, guys, is I didn't like the way this was fitting up against the frame. Uh, it seemed like one side was wanting to go one way and the other side the other. So what I did was, you can see it's where it needs to be now. I went ahead and put the washer and the nut on the inside of this. So on the inside back here. And I ran it down to where it pulled this over, if that makes sense. And the reason I did that is because that centered things up. So now I know I'll have to do a little additional taking of stuff apart, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark all three of these holes. So we're gonna have to drill two here in the front and then one here in the back. So I'm gonna mark those. I'm gonna pull this thing back out of place and then we will drill those with like a, I'm gonna center punch them, then we'll drill them with a smaller bit and then an 11 sixteenths is what we need to do as far as drilling the hole for the, uh, the nut cert that we've gotta put in there. One good thing about the frame coating is I just used a screwdriver to do my marking. So you can see our two holes that are marked there. Like I said, I'm gonna center punch the um, middle of them with a punch. We'll use a small bit to get started. You can see the other one right here. Not too bad. I don't think this is gonna be as bad as what I thought. I was kind of dreading drilling this, but I, I really don't think, guys, it's gonna take much to get through that frame. With I think I'll use a stepped drill bit, but we'll see when I get to that point. I'm gonna go grab a small one and start. We're using a center punch, getting the first hole started. With this guy, I then switched over to a stepped bit. You can see I've got it marked with a piece of tape to the 11 16 mark. Didn't want to go any further. Got one of them drilled, all right? So you can see I've got one, let's see if we can get under here, this guy here. And I've got one of the nut certs. That's a perfect fit. It's supposed to be like that, okay? And the tool is going to cinch this down, kind of smash it on the inside. So we've got that 
So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other two, and then hopefully we can get the bracket up into place. Um, I don't, I think this comes with the tool to smash this, but I'm gonna have to double check over there. So we're gonna go ahead, get the other three holes drilled, and then we'll go to that process next. Now that we've got our holes drilled, it does come with the tool. So here's how we're gonna do this, all right? We're gonna use two washers, two half inch washers, the tool, and then that gets threaded in just like this. Now, you need two three quarters, right? You need a three quarter on the tool and a wrench. So we've got a three quarter inch wrench and I'm hoping that's the right size actually. It looks a little bigger than that actually. It is. This is three quarters up top and I've got a three quarters on my impact. I'm gonna try to put it in with an impact. You can use, and here's why, I think I'll be able to hold it up against the frame like at a 90 degree angle, you need to keep it flush with the hole while you're doing this. But um, I'm gonna go grab a wrench that fits the center of this. So we're gonna hold this while we're tightening this and that's gonna cinch this down. We'll just see how it works, guys. So make sure it's nice and flush in the hole, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it up in there, get it flush, and then we're gonna attempt to tighten it down and engage this portion right here. At this point, guys, I've got all the threaded or the nut certs in. So you can see this one right here. I will tell you guys this, um, I screwed the first one up and here's why. And I wanna suggest that you do this also. All right, so it does come with the tool to install them. Now what you're supposed to do, and I showed you earlier, put your nut cert on there. Here's the problem. If you're using a bolt that's actually going in it, it's not long enough. So I went to the hardware store and I got a longer one. I put a washer on. I put this guy on, the tool that comes with the kit, and another washer, okay? I thread this into the nut cert until it stops. And then I'm using an impact, I'm using a smaller impact so I have a little more feel. I'm holding this nice and flush against the frame. And I'm gonna try to show you guys on the other side since I've already got these in, but I did screw one of them up and I'm gonna have to drill it out. It's not a huge deal. Um, if you use a countersunk drill bit, or you could even use a step drill bit to just knock the ears off of them, um, I'm gonna replace the front one. So either way, um, I'll do that off camera. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to put this back into place and start to snug these things down. Got this guy in place now, and what I've done, guys, is I've used this bolt. I know you're not supposed to tighten it up yet, but I'm using this to draw these two together to line up my holes. That's what I did when I initially marked them, and I think it's a really good idea to do that. So snug this top one down quite a bit to bring that over, and then put this bolt in with your leaf pack, and then snug it down to bring this over to get it kind of centered, because like I said, with the coating on the bottom of the truck, you have an issue. So now we need to put these bolts in and torque them to 75 foot pounds, which I'm hoping we've got the rib nuts installed well enough where they're not gonna spin at that torque setting, but that is the torque spec they call for. One other thing is you need to use a washer and a lock washer on this guy. So before you put it in, put the lock washer on and then the washer, then you thread them in and torque them to 75. Like I said, I wanted to show you on the other side so you don't screw these up. Get a longer bolt that goes all the way through, okay? So you can see I've got washer, the longer bolt, washer, the tool, and another washer. So we're gonna put this up in here, like that. It's very important, guys. Don't use a really powerful impact, in my opinion. I'm using my quarter inch, technically it's a quarter inch drive. So I'm holding this, it's actually seven eighths. The instructions say three quarters, but it's seven eighths three quarters on the end of the nut, depending on you know what you get. But that is how I'm installing these. So I'm gonna go ahead, put my wrench on it. I'm gonna snug this down until you feel it stop. And then I'm gonna try to thread it out and make sure that we're good. Now that we've got this bracket installed on both sides, I went ahead and loosened up the nut and bolt that goes into the front. Remember to do that because we wanna tighten that up when we have weight on the ground. And we're gonna need a little movement back and forth because the next thing we need to do is, we're probably gonna have to lift the rear end up, but we need to get the leaf spring in its hanger back in the back. So the new shackle that we put on earlier, we're gonna have to put that up in that pocket 
So in order to do that, um, you may need some help, but I think I can do it out here by myself. I've got the jack under there. I'm gonna lift the rear end just a little bit. And I, while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to swing this up into place. And you should have enough room between the muffler. I mean, we were able to get it out with no issue, so I don't foresee us having any problems. You may have to swing out to the side and then in, but you should have a little bit of movement here. I kind of decided to do it from this angle and use my leg to kind of hold the um, bottom of this up while I get it up in place. I got the other one in there. Once you get it in, they do supply you a new bolt. It does need to go from the inside out, if that makes sense, just like the factory one does. So you'll have to kind of put this guy up in there and get it started. Not a bad idea to do that anyway, so you're not struggling to try to find it when you're, if you can just get it through that initial hole there. And then once we do that, we'll get this up into place, thread that through. And same thing here, guys, we're not gonna tighten this. I am gonna put the washer and the nut on it. There's also, as you can see, a washer on this side. So make sure that you put those on, but then um, we can move on to the saddles once we get this in place. Now that we have that leaf spring up in its pocket in the back and the bolt through there, we're ready to move on to the saddles. So on this, guys, you're gonna have multiple pieces, right? So you've got new U-bolts, you've got your bottom plate, you've got your hardware to bolt down the U-bolts and whatnot, and then you have this guy. This is the saddle. This is what makes this all possible, right? So we're relocating the leaf pack to the bottom side instead of the top like it was. That's where we get our drop. But this is different depending on what rear end you have. So you have a 12 bolt and you have a 10 bolt. This is a 12 bolt truck as we discovered earlier uh, when we were trying to move the brake lines. But whichever one you have, all right, so if you have a 12 bolt, then the 12 needs to point forward. You'll also see this. This is part, basically what this is doing is it's realigning your rear end, it's moving it back. Because if what happened is, if we just moved it up, it would move the wheels forward. So this locating pin is going to set in this first hole. So it's gonna pull the rear end back, if that makes sense. It would be just the opposite if we were doing the 10 bolt and the 10 was facing forward. Obviously, you're still pulling the rear end back. So that's why it has two separate holes in it and you have a 12 and a 10. They're a little bit different shape. So make sure that you've got whichever rear end you have facing forward. And this is just going to go underneath and it's going to, let me get the light under here. We're gonna line it up with the pin. You see that pin that we reversed earlier right there? That pin is gonna go through that hole. And I'll show you guys once I get it in place, but I've got, you can see the rear end, I can move it back and forth. I've got it up high enough where we can sneak that under there, um, but you know, not so low that we're having to lift on the rear end. We're basically just teetering on the jack back and forth. Once we do that, then we can drop in our new U-bolts and we'll uh, get underneath and show you what's, what you're gonna have to do because that arrow is going to point towards the front of the truck. But I'll, I'll show you guys that here in just a second. One of the things I completely forgot to do, and uh, I mean, it's not a big deal, we can do it at this point, but see this bracket where the brake line normally hooked and the new shackle or saddle has uh, this incorporated in it so you can put your bolt back in it, but I did not cut that bracket off and so we're gonna have to knock that bracket off because the this won't set around it. I thought it might, thought we might get lucky, but it doesn't clear it, at least it didn't seem, I may try it again, but I don't think it's gonna clear without trimming that bracket down. Um, it's not gonna set where it needs to. So we'll, we'll have to get a cutoff wheel in here and I'll be able to lift it up and cut here from the bottom, like kind of like this. But I just don't think you can sneak it around it. You're gonna have to cut it off. I was able to trim that off. You can see I, what I did was I just lifted it up and set the brake on my knee like that and then came from the bottom side. That keeps you away from the brake line and that's nah, not too bad. So now we should be able to slide this guy with the 12 bolt facing in front and the alignment pin in the front hole, which pushes this back. There we go. And then we should be able to set the rear end into it. That's how it's supposed to work. Now, I gotta go trim the other side before we continue, but that gives you an idea. And so you can see now we have that threaded insert incorporated in. That's really a nice feature because most people don't think that far ahead. I'm gonna take this back out for now 
and we kind of need to position both sides at the same time but i'm going to run over to the other side and cut it real quick so now i have our saddle put in you can see with the 12 bolt facing forward because that's what we have and we need to make sure that it's in the front hole right so we're pushing the rear end back 12 bolt in front if you have a 12 bolt in the front hole so that alignment dowel that we swapped over in the center of this i like to lift this up a little and make sure that it's going in and it is you also want to make sure that your two little arms that come up off this are underneath this guy so the original piece you don't want one poking out of the front or the back and then once we do that you can see we've got this guy on the bottom and the arrow is facing forward and then that alignment dowel will be in the will line up with this hole we've put the u-bolts in place and i'm going to start to snug them down but guys you really want to make sure that you're in the front hole on both sides so potentially you could get the rear end turned a little bit be in the back alignment hole on the other side and the front one on this side so just make sure go back and forth make sure that you're in that i let some pressure off the jack so the the weight of the rear end would help it stay in place if that makes sense so i've got that done i'm going to go ahead and put the u-bolts on the other side in that bottom plate and then i'm just going to snug them down until we get this to a kind of line up in the bottom the uh, that alignment bolt coming through there uh and i'm going to leave it and i think we'll wait and torque these once it's on the ground is generally how it goes a couple things to keep in mind when you're snugging these down one you want to go in a crisscross pattern so i'm i've got the one snug down on that side but here what i'm doing is i'm counting you don't have to necessarily count but i'm doing like three quarter turns and then the opposite side three quarter turns then three quarter turns three quarter turns and gradually cinching it up so a couple things you want to watch for obviously making sure that this lines up that's that nut in the middle you want to make sure that this is completely flat your saddle so it didn't pop out of the centering pin down below and then in all of that at the same time you want to try to keep your leaf uh, or your u-bolts as square to the rear end as possible like you don't want them like wide out it shouldn't do that but you know i like to gradually or occasionally between tightening one go up and push them together in the center that way they're nice and even when you're looking from the back so either way i'm gonna go ahead and snug these down like i said i'm not gonna torque them it's gonna get them snug up against it so the rear end can't move around so the instructions actually say once you get it snug down to go ahead and torque these in a crisscross pattern to 130 so i guess we'll go ahead and do that actually um i'm gonna start obviously guys like kind of like a wheel here 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 i'm gonna do 130 i'll probably go over it twice i'm gonna go to the other side and do it as well so 130 on these and then i think we'll be moving on we got to put our stock remember our brake line's not hooked up we we need to grab that um i think it was a 10 millimeter and thread it back into place next now that we got those snug down to 130 we're gonna go ahead and torque this so i put that third it's actually a 13 millimeter put it back in like i said it's incorporated in the back here that needs to go to 18 foot pounds so let's torque it back down now we're going to move on to the bump stop so this neat little bracket that they've incorporated that goes in here like this and then your bump stop goes on the bottom and you have a um, allen head in that and what size it's an eight millimeter i may have to get underneath here to see what's going on and this torques to 35 inch pounds, so it ain't gonna take much to get this guy snug down. And I'm gonna run it up with my impact, actually, or my uh, ratchet. There we go. Not much to it. I'll grab the I'll grab a torque wrench and make sure that we're square, but I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. Definitely a pretty nice little deal that fits in that and uh, holds the nut. So I'll get, like I said, I'll torque that down to 35 inch pounds and then uh, go install the other one on the other side. And then hopefully we're ready for the shock. I think we're gonna have, we have shock extenders and we'll get under here and take a look at what we need to do to put those on next because those really need to go on obviously before the shock can go in. Now we're on to the relocation bracket, which is this. And I get a lot of people that ask me, um, do you have to have these? Yes, you do. Um, 
not only do you need a shorter shock, but you need to re renegotiate the geometry. So it's awesome that this kit comes with this, but what we need to do is we're gonna sandwich it over the old, basically your old spot in here, right? Now we can't just put a bolt in here, it would crush that. So it comes with the sleeve to put in the center. Now with that sleeve, you're gonna grab your old bolt, so the original shock bolt that was in the bottom of your original shock, and you're gonna push that through, just like that. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put our nut on the end of it. And I'm gonna snug it down because we have to drill another hole. If you just did this, it might walk around. So in the center of that, we have to drill an additional hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get under there and I'll show you guys, but it comes with a nut washer, another washer and a nylock nut to go through that opening. And then they also supply a new shock bolt when we get the shock up in place that obviously goes in place of the shock. So let me go get my drill and a punch and I'll probably drill a pilot hole. I'll actually probably mark this is what I'll do. I'm gonna snug this down a little more than I'm gonna mark it and I'll take it out of place because I don't wanna go into this piece. You can see I've got it snug down now and I've got it marked. I just used my screwdriver to, to do that. I'm going to center punch it now. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole similar to what we did on the nut certs. And once I do that, then I'm gonna drill it out to a 7 16 hole and we'll have the mounting area that we need. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take this back off now um, so I'm not drilling through this as well because I'm using a stepped drill bit, as you can see. Got that 7 16 hole drill now. And um, I've got the washer on both sides and the nylock nut. So you need to torque this to 70 foot pounds. And the stock one, guys, it goes to 104. That's tight. Um, so we're gonna torque both those down and then I'm gonna go grab the shock and we'll get it in Now we've got the rear shock and it comes with these aluminum spacers So we're gonna put that in place on both the top and chances are they're gonna fall out So I'm gonna wait and put them in the bottom But we need to get this guy up into place up top. This is your top and I went ahead and adjusted this to full um, stiff so all the way clockwise until it doesn't turn anymore. But we need to get our bolts in there. We're using the factory bolts up top. Remember, there is no nut. It's a, the nut is integrated into the truck. So it's gonna go with this facing out, obviously, so you can get some adjustment. I really wish it were on the bottom. That makes it a little harder to adjust it, but that's not a big deal. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that. So let's get this in there. It torques to 85 foot-pounds. Same thing goes for the bottom. The difference is the bottom, we're using the new supplied hardware, and obviously we need to put our little aluminum sleeves in as well. I'm just not gonna put them in yet because a lot of times when you're wiggling stuff around or trying to torque the top, the bottoms will fall out. See, that one was already moving around. One other thing I forgot to tell you guys is there are two different sizes here. The smaller one is the one that goes up top. So I kind of screwed up when I put those in there because when you go to put the shock up in place, if you got the tall ones in, it's not going to fit in the stock location. So you gotta put the smaller ones in, there are two sizes. The shaft's the same, so they'll fit in the same spot, you know, but you won't be able to get your shock up top. Got the top of the shock torqued down to 80 foot pounds, and you can see I face this one, they're both facing back as far as the adjustment knob. So now I've lifted the rear end enough where we can slide the bottom ones in. And guys, look, I would normally tell you to not torque the shocks down until you're finished up, right? So it's on the ground. But in this case, because these have a swivel point in the center, I, it's not gonna hurt anything because they swivel. It's not like a bushing where you're binding it up. So we're gonna get this. Holy cow, that's gonna be a tight fit. That's interesting. All right, I may have to loosen this. I shouldn't have, I wondered about that when I was snugging this down. But there is no earthly way without loosening that up that we're going to be able to get that into place. When I loosened this up, it slid right in. So you can see I've got the bolt in there. So we need to torque this back down to 104 like it was and this to 85. Seems odd, but I mean, these are aluminum. So maybe that's why. 
So we'll get those two torqued. And then guys, the last thing I need to do is find a place. We got to plug in our suspension components, right? So we used to have some stuff back here. We'll talk about that here in just one second. Um, but aside from that, we're getting real close. Now, as far as um, everything bolting on, it's all bolted on at this point for the most part. Um, I think I'm gonna do a, I don't know, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do a separate video, guys. I didn't tell you about, if you did the um, traction bar option, the top of the plate of this guy is a little bit different. So that's, it, so you guys know if you're planning on doing that option. Um, like I said, I didn't do that. I did get the helper bags, but I think I'm gonna put those in a separate video because I am impatient and I wanna see this thing on the ground. Um, aside from that though, we got, you know, look, this thing has a mag ride, which we talked about when we were in the front, but we've got two plugs back here. So it's really odd in the back on these trucks where we took this guy off, which was the ride height sensor. There's only one ride height sensor in the back. So we've got a couple different things here. So this right here will be like what we use in the front. I think he's got him here. Where's the other dude? Okay. So we've got this, which plugs in to this guy. We've got to find a place to mount these, which I talked about in the front. I still haven't done that, but these aren't supposed to be plugged in until you have the tool to adjust. Yeah, so we can't do much with that right now. So that one I'm gonna leave unplugged. I'm just gonna kind of keep it up in this area. But the ride height sensor is just a plastic plug-in, which you guys saw on the front as well. Um, I'm gonna get it put in on this, and I'm gonna find a place for it to live and zip tie it somewhere, like up here where it's not gonna be a problem, probably to the brake lines up there. This here, yeah, you got it over here. So this here is gonna plug into that plastic piece, the one up front. This one we're gonna have to deal with later. So you can't see it, but the ride height sensor is zip tied on the top of the brake line bracket right there. And like I said, I'll, I'm gonna come back later and do the other one, which is the shock control. We're gonna have one of those on both sides, obviously. For now, I'm gonna move the wires up where they're not hitting anything, and we're gonna get this thing, we're gonna put the wheels on it. I might go through and torque the rest of the suspension because remember, we haven't torqued the front or the back of the leaf spring. We've torqued everything else, but um, I just wanna see what it looks like. So the wheels are on. You can definitely tell it's lower. He's gonna lift the back up. We're gonna jack, pull the jack stands out. We're gonna take a look. You're not off, Colin. Still not. You'll hear him. Definitely got some adjusting to do in the front. Yeah, let it in. Woo. Woo. I like it. Got some adjusting to do in the front though. That's for sure. Now that it's actually sitting on the ground, um, we need to make some, we need to torque some other stuff, right? So I did put a measuring tape on it. Guys, it went down four inches exactly in the back. It went down maybe an inch and a half in the front. So right now, 34 in the back, 34 and a half in the front. I still think we're gonna get some settling here. So here's what I'm planning on doing. We're gonna get this thing off the ground. We're gonna torque the things in the back that we need to. Now, the downside is when you lower one, it's a little harder to get under it to torque stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my jack in the center. I've got my wheel stands here. I'm gonna jack it up, then I'm gonna put the suspension or the tires on these wooden blocks. When I do that, I'm gonna bounce up and down the suspension. Now remember, we're at full stiff because we adjusted our settings all the way clockwise right so that is full stiff so i bounced up and down it a minute ago and there's like not a lot of movement so it'd be too stiff to drive like this we're also going to have to adjust our strut or our shocks so while i'm down there i'll take you guys under there with the camera but ultimately what i'm looking at is we're going to torque the two front bolts 
remember the one the original one and the one that's in the new hanger to 130 foot pounds they also supply i noticed some red loctite so probably put a little, little red loctite on that that one that the new one the lower one same in the back 130 which is odd because those trucks and the ones after it don't get that much torque so they must have changed some things in the back end i know the suspension's completely different but ultimately that's what we need to do next on both sides so we got a total of four bolts on each side once i get those shackle bolts torqued then i can put my exhaust mount remember we had to take that 15 millimeter out to get our exhaust mount out to get in there i'll be able to put that back in but let's get it off the ground get it on these wheel stands and then we will make i'm going to show you guys the adjustment on the actual strut or the shock itself while i'm down there you can see why i made these makes it way easier to get under these things so i've left the jack under there just for added support let's get these things torqued it's going to take a while to, for me to get under there and get all these 130s a lot guys so i went ahead and got this top one to 130 and once we do that then guys i don't i don't know if all these trucks are going to have this but we can go ahead and put our torques back in that we had to remove to move this panel to get to it remember when we were taking it out so i'll go ahead and put that back in on both sides and then we can move on the instructions or the packet came with the red loctite for this one so that's the one i'm going to put red loctite on the inside on the nut and uh, the threads once we get all this stuff torqued down to the 130 so the four in the front four in the back um, original hardware up top by the way we need to go ahead and don't forget to put these back in your hangers remember these that we took out right here because your exhaust is gonna rattle if you don't put them back in so those are just 15 millimeters i'm gonna pop those in real quick and then we're gonna go take a look at the shock adjustment and like i said i'm probably gonna take the front wheel off actually i know i said i may drive it but i think i'm gonna take the front wheel off make the adjustment on that strut and possibly roll the coil over down a little bit so let's uh let's get this 15 in and then we'll roll under here look at these back shocks how we're gonna adjust them and then we'll uh, move to the front now for your shock adjustment, you can see the adjustment knob up here on the top. And so ultimately guys, we've got this set at full stiff. So it's all the way clockwise. You can see it, it'll be easier to see in the front. But what we're going to do is we're going to move it 12 clicks counterclockwise. That's a good place to start. Like I said, I tried bouncing up and down on this thing. And uh, yeah, it has like no travel right now, which it, it's full stiff. So either way, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that so by turning counterclockwise, we're gonna go 12 clicks and I'm gonna do 12 clicks all the way around. And then we're gonna take it out. Like I said, I'll probably take the front off the ground and adjust the coilover a little bit, but we're gonna do that all the way around. I'll show you when we get to the front as well. So do it here on this side, do it on the other side in the back, and then we're good to let this thing down and torque the wheels. Got the back on the ground, got the front driver's or passenger side up. Look guys, if you just lift, the front of this up, you can reach in there and make your adjustment. You see that little adjustment knob right there. So we could make our adjustment there, but I, like I said, I'm wanting to roll the coilover down a little bit. And I'm sure somebody's thinking like, well, what about all the ride sensors and whatnot? Well, we're going to address that later in this video, but for now, I'm wanting to get kind of the stance where I want it, get the measurements where I want it. And so in order to do that, I wanna make all these adjustments. Now, remember we did go ahead and plug in the ride height sensors, but because it requires a special programming tool to do the shock sensors, um, I've got to get one of those. And a buddy of mine has one. You either have to have a GM one or you have to have a snap on one. I'm sure there's others out there, but they're very expensive tools. I do not have one. Just doesn't make sense. But we need our little spanner wrench that connects here. And here's my plan. I'm going to roll this down. So we need to undo our little screw here. Remember the I think it's a four millimeter. We need to undo that first before we make any kind of movement. Once we do that, then we're going to start to roll this down. And I'm thinking guys, I'm gonna roll it down about a quarter of an inch is what I'm thinking. Then we're gonna go take it for a drive. At the same time, as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and adjust this down. There's one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that's where we need to be so 12 adjustments that's where they say to start i actually like my suspension kind of soft 
Uh, I kind of like it to float. I know a lot of people don't, but look, we're not hammering corners with this thing, so um, I just want it to ride nice. But anyway, let's go grab our spanner wrench and get this thing spun down. I'm gonna get an initial measurement here first though. Now, sometimes you can just count the turns and it makes it a little bit easier since this has this um, sleeve right here that we have to loosen. So we, we could have potentially just count the turns, but we're at three, I'm gonna measure from the center. We're at three and like a 16th. And so I'm gonna go, like I said, I'm gonna try to go down about a quarter of an inch. I don't know if I wanna go a half inch. Generally it correlates, i tell you what, I'm gonna go a half inch. We're gonna get crazy. We can always move it if we don't like it. So we'll loosen this up. Hopefully that's gonna work for me. You don't want any weight on this while you're doing this. But I'm gonna, I think we're gonna go for a half inch. So I'm gonna attempt to get it to the half inch mark. I think I can do that. It may be too much. If I'm gonna start adjusting it with this spanner wrench and um, we'll see what happens. I may, I may back off on that. That's the wrong direction. It's kind of neat to have this actually. I mean, I've got spanner wrenches, but it's kind of neat that it attaches to your um, ratchet. So there's one turn. see how much just one time around got us probably not a lot yeah we got us maybe a an eighth of an inch I guess what's going on with that so I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna see if we can just count the turns at this point. I mean, I'm gonna measure it too, but we'll go around like maybe three or four times. Well, there's two. I think maybe a half inch may be a little aggressive just based off the feeling of pressure here of the spring. After three turns here, we're gonna see where we're at. So there's three. We're down about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna go one more turn and then we're gonna lock it down. So I'm gonna go four turns total. I won't show you guys the other side. I'll go do the other side, but once I, I won't show you any more of this, me adjusting it, but once I get to that point, I'm gonna cinch that back down and We'll go to the other side. I'll put the wheel back on and we'll set it back down on the ground here. One other thing, don't forget to tighten that back up, this um, four millimeter. And the other thing is, guys, look, the low, you can get, like, look, we have a ton of thread left. You can hammer low. The problem is, is with a drop like this where it's in the, um, the spring and not a spindle, um, when the more you drop it, the harder it's going to be to get into alignment spec. Um, it starts to camber the wheel out. So we can, we're, we're only, Ritech essentially recommends two inches of drop. 
I would probably like to push it more towards the two and a half inches on the front is where I'm trying to be, I think. All adjusted, both sides. Got the battery hooked back up and look, you got some help out here. He's helping with, he's got his pliers over there. Um, look, you're gonna have suspension errors. It's gonna be, it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with that. But for right now, like I said, I just, I wanna level it out. A lot of times when you, like I said earlier, when you set these things down, the A-arms don't settle completely. So we may be, we may get down the road and back and this thing be just hammered low. So I won't take you guys on that trip with me because I really, I'm gonna make a video of you know the ride quality i'm obviously making a separate video on the airbag or the helper bag install so and then i'm going to make a video maybe in the same video i do the hauling i'm going to show you guys how this thing performs hauling a trailer so uh, i've got several things planned here so either way i'm going to go grab the keys i'm going to buzz down the road when we come back we'll get a new measurement matter of fact let's put a measuring tape on it right now and see because earlier I was at 34 and a half on the front and now with those adjustments I just made let's see where we're at um 34 and maybe an eighth I'm going to the very bottom of that plastic it looks a little higher on this side actually yeah we're at no Oh, 34 and about an eighth. It's, it's almost dead on, actually. All right, let's uh, buzz down the road, let this thing settle out a little bit, and uh, we'll come back and measure it again. Just got back, and no noises, no issues, guys, um, other than the suspension pop up. But look, it's exciting when you put something together, take it down the road, and you don't have any rubbing, no issues, everything rides fine, there's no noises, there's no creaks. I'm impressed. Um, here's the other impressive part. I just put a tape measure on the front and the front did settle a little bit from where we just measured before we took the drive. 33 and 7 eighths. And here's what's crazy, identical on both sides. Now, with that being said, the back also settled from that measurement. It's actually 33 and 5 eighths. So it's actually an eighth of an inch lower in the back. Now, what? here's what I'm planning on doing. We're gonna take it back apart and we're gonna obviously install, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the ride height. We already did the ride height sensors, but I'm gonna show you guys how to install the other pieces because I've gotta find a mounting place for them. So we're gonna install those. I'm gonna show you how the process of getting those to learn, you know, kind of what the truck's doing. But at the same time that I have the front apart doing that, I'm probably gonna take it down another two turns because we're still not, remember we started at like 35 and 3 eighths, I believe. So we're still not quite two inches lower in the front, but man, it looks lower to, I mean, it looks low to me. Now it doesn't look like, look, we're not tucking tire or anything crazy like, you know, the green truck. But to me, I, I, this is another reason guys, why I went with this kit. I didn't want a hammered truck and I didn't want to have any issues. I really didn't want to cut the rear frame. And in order to get a six inch drop out of these trucks, which I couldn't even imagine, if we're at not even quite two, and you can get a four inch drop in the front of these trucks, and you're only at like four and a half in the back, and you can get a six inch, I, the, those trucks have to be hammered. I mean, hammered low. We're back out here making adjustments. I spun this down a little more to get a little more drop, uh, just because it's a little higher in the back, or a little lower in the back still. So aside from that, you know, loosening up the four millimeter, cranking it down with our spanner wrench, I was trying to find a good home and I told you we'd talk about this later in the video. These things are ginormous, guys. These are for the shock simulator. So we have our ride height sense uh, simulator, which is this guy, and there's only three in the truck. There's one in the back, two in the front, one on each side. And I initially had this zip tied up to the original mounting tab that held the ride height sensor itself. Well, I've since decided to take that off because I think this would be a great home for this guy. See that? How nice that would fit. However, how am I going to fasten it? Well, that's the next question. I think I'm going to use some self-tapping screws in order to make that happen. So I think, guys, this is, I'm happy with this for a location. We've got plenty of cable to get down to our plug, which is this guy, the smaller one that's unplugged. And I haven't had those plugged in yet because it's very, I talked to the shock sim guys or the shock delete guys that 
that furnished these or that I bought them from. And I said, for a couple questions I have, do you have any pictures of where people mounted them? They said, no, a lot of people don't, um, I guess, share that information, but they said that they don't, they get warm, but they don't get like so hot that they would melt. Let's say if you put a zip tie through here. So I could use a zip tie, but what I'm thinking is I'll use some self tapping screws and we'll run one down in all four corners. So I'll probably like, you know, find a spot where I like it here, you know, in this area, and then I'll drill some small pilot holes and then we'll use some self tapping screws to hold this thing in place. I think that'll be, and they said a lot of people just use two of the holes to mount it. Could I use zip ties? Yeah, I probably could, but I don't think I'm gonna go that route. So what I'll do is I'll show you um, once I get them put on with the self tappers, but that's the area I'm thinking. And then of course, we've still got this holding things like the wires out of the way of the tires. I was kind of thinking here when I initially had that piece there, but I just, I don't like any of the placement other than that spot right there. Now the back, we're gonna have to get creative as well, but this is the where it's gonna go on both both sides of the front. Here's what we've got. I drilled those four holes after marking them. So I set that up in there. I used my little awl or pick to mark the holes. I used my center punch to punch. And then I drilled a, just a tad smaller hole than what a self-tapping screw would need in order to grab. Now you can notice I only have three and that's because behind that is that opening where we took that other piece off. So it gra actually ground when I tried to it's just too close to that hole to, to actually work. So three, it is super solid. I actually think probably two is right, guys. I don't think you need you need three. Um, so all we have to do at this point is plug this guy in, but don't do that until you're ready to program, right? So we gotta, we gotta program these things. So you can't really start the truck or go down the road. You don't want to anyway until you're ready for the programming part. Now mounting these things in the back presents a little more of a challenge. I'm gonna roll you under here and show you what I've came up with. Um, there's nowhere to screw them in. You don't have a ton of lead here. So you can see I've got them zip tied. And like I said, guys, I talked to them. They said they didn't get warm enough to melt plastic. So I've got four zip ties, actually six, cause it takes a double to get around this. But this, I, I experimented with like over here on the back of the shock, but it, it hangs off one way or the other. I just didn't love it. And there's just no other good place to put it because you don't have a ton of lead on your plug. You know, it's meant to go to the shock here and you just, there's just not a lot of lead. So this is what I've came up with. We're clear of the exhaust. It'd be way on, it'd be on the bump stops way before it hit the exhaust. We're out of the way of any clearance issues, like running into anything. So I think this will work. So you can see I've already zip tied the line. All I have to do here is plug it in. And then, like I said, once I, I haven't done the other side yet, you can see I've got one left, but once I get the other side zipped up, um, just, I'm going to make it exactly like this one. Um, once I do that, then we can get in and see what's involved in the programming of these things. Like I said, it's, it's kind of a particular process and it may require you taking it somewhere to have it done. Right? So if you don't have access to the thing I'm going to show you, you can, it's important to leave them unplugged. So if I can't bring that thing to my house and I have to drive it down there, I'm leaving them unplugged for now because they don't want you to ruin the controller for these, which is part of the truck, not part of this, or risk damaging these because these things are not cheap. So um, like I said, if you're gonna take it somewhere to do it, um, I'm gonna show you the process either way, but if you're gonna take it somewhere, then you need to leave these unplugged until you get there. It's about time to program these things, but I wanted to show you guys kind of my front setup here. I've used the factory. There's a factory retainer right here that I'm zip tying to. We've obviously got this guy mounted with three screws. It's nice and solid. We've got it plugged in. The locks are all slid into place. You need to make sure there's a positive click. Listen for that click, slide your locks in place and we should be good. So I'm going to put the wheel back on. We'll tie up the other side and the backs you guys already saw. So the next step will be us programming them. So at this point, you're going to need a good friend with a snap on solace. We've got it plugged in. We've got the car turned or the truck turned on without any, it's not started. Okay. So I've had to manually find the truck in order to get to this position, but you can go through the codes and you can get to suspension. And so we're to the point where we're learning the, the ride height trim again. The downside is there's not, it, at least on this version, there's not a learn all. 
So I'm having to go through and learn each one individually. And guys, this is probably way over the DIY guy's head. Um, I get it. And a lot of you, I mean, this is like a, with all the stuff loaded on, it's probably a $5,000 or more machine. So it's not like, it's not cheap. And so here's what I would suggest. I would suggest leaving the ride height sensors, go ahead and plug those in, but you need to leave the shocks unplugged. That is what they recommended to me and drive it to a facility that has one of these and they will send you the instructions. So they emailed me the instructions on how to reset this. And so basically I'm going through and relearning every one of these. That one didn't act like it went. Learn. All right, so they're all learned now. So then it says, I don't think we need to, it doesn't say anything about messing with those. So we're gonna go back a page and it took me forever, I had to get to, I started with the scanner and I'll try to go back and show you guys how I got to this point because I've been messing with it for 30 plus minutes just trying to find, there's not like a search bar where you can look, but we're gonna go to, uh, cause I've already got codes, I cleared those out. So system data or module information, I think it's under module informa ID information, maybe wrong. Yeah, it's not under that system data. And what we're looking for, there we go. All right, so you can see, here's what we need to see. You can see our left front position sensor. So that's our left, um, basically the front. And then you have the right front, and then you have the left rear and the right rear, which they should basically read identical since there's only one. Oh, that's the position, sorry. And then the shock absorber. So those are the things that we're wanting to look at. We want to see those. So let's go and look at what we've got. They say in their instructions they sent me, with the height sensors installed, continue with the ride height trim calibration, which is what I just did. And then once you do that, which I did on each shock, procedure complete, Navigate to the suspension setting digital readout to verify calibration was valid. SDC ride height sensors are designed to provide 2.5 volts of feedback, which is stock ride height. Note, height feedback will vary depending on wiring, so some variation is normal. If all four sensors read the exact same number, it is possible that the scan tool is not correct program for your vehicle and they don't they're not reading identical they're all different on the position sensor review the shock absorber actuator command which my truck keeps shutting off um and then shock actuator command is the amount of power going to the two pin shock sims right so that's the one that plugged into the shock the idea is to keep this as low as possible, less than 10% or 10 MA. And I'm not, here's the other crazy part is I'm not seeing, they're going negative and positive. And so I don't know necessarily that they're in the range they're supposed to be. I hate this touch screen. The shock, the right height sensors are right. That I know. But these things are popping all over the place. So guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just test it. We're just going to have to drive it down the road and see what happens at this point. But I will go back and show you kind of how I found this. So if you go to the home page, when you turn this thing on, I'll try to get you back to it if I can. Like I said, if, if, if somebody uses this thing all the time, they're probably a little more familiar with it than I am. But I went to scanner and then I manually picked GMC 
I manually picked the year, make, and model. Because it seems like when I automatic, ID, I'll show you here. If I automatic ID, it'll find the truck. And it does. But for some reason, when I did the auto ID, it didn't show me suspension as an option, like of codes that we could mess with. So that's why I did what I did. Um, see down here where you've got common selections, you've got engine, transmission, brakes, and suspension was not on here. Even when I go all the way down to the bottom, suspension wasn't here, I don't believe. No. Oh, there it is. Suspension control module. So okay, I take that back. Maybe I just didn't scroll far enough. So once I get in there, that's how I got to the point that I just showed you. So like I said, maybe best for you to take it to somebody. But for now, we are going to drive this thing and see what happens. We are finally complete here, guys. I know it's been a very, very long video. Uh, it's a lot of work. But look, there's a lot of parts and it's really well thought out. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, to put on this in order to make this drop happen. And so there's other kits out there. I know I don't think any of them really stack up as far as the quality of strut that you're going to get, the quality of shock, the quality of parts. Um, I just think this really has everything whipped hands down. This is the perfect drop. And just, I mean, just look at it. It's not slammed. Um, it's not like my green truck. Look, you could still use it as a truck at this point. And we're going to get into that in later videos because we still got to do the helper bags in the back. I'm going to hook it up to my trailer. I'm going to show you guys the process. We're going to talk about the ride quality. We're going to talk about using it as a truck. Um, I just set it with the instructions as far as the little knobs. I talked about that earlier. I set it 12 clicks back, just like they said. I've driven it up and down the road, but not enough to tell you guys whether that makes a difference. So I'll probably cover that. I'll definitely cover that in another video. But look, when I originally bought this truck, I had planned on doing a 4.6 drop. But after seeing this, this is perfect. It's got that gap around the fender and the tire that's almost uniform. It's probably a little shorter at the top, especially up here, but it's not, we're not, nothing's rubbing. Like no lock to lock rubbing. And like I said, I'll cover that a little more in another video when we talk about ride quality. Like I said, I still gotta do the helper bags, but yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's in depth. The kit's really in depth, but it comes with quality parts. And look, it, the newer trucks have more stuff. There's more stuff going on. You guys just saw that with the shock stuff. That is a headache just by itself. And that has nothing to do with ride tech. It's just, you know, when you're losing the stock struts, you have to bypass them somehow. But either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments. We'll get to the measurements because I did measure it. And I'm really kind of surprised because it looks lower to me than what the numbers tell. But here's what else I will tell you. In the back, this thing, if you did a six inch drop in the back, like a lot of the kits on the market do, you are 100% gonna have to notch this truck. There is no getting around it, guys. There is not a ton of room when you move that axle to the top side of the leaf springs back here. So definitely gonna need the helper bags because I'm gonna use this to haul my trailer back there. And uh, there's just no way around it. I think if you buy this kit, guys, you, you should do the helper bags as well. I know it's an additional cost, but it's worth it. I've got them on everything I've ever lowered. Um, in the shop, you guys have seen that the green truck has them on it. Um, every, well, every truck that I've lowered over the years has had a helper bag on it. It's just, it's, it's almost a must if you're going to ever hook a trailer. And I, I don't even care if it's just a little lawnmower trailer, but let's talk about the measurements because I did a before and after and I was able to get it complete without making any additional adjustments on one side from the other. So, you know, like the typical Chevy lean, I was able to get it completely even all the way around. So now we we're at 33 and a half from the plastic. Remember when I originally measured from the plastic to the ground, 33 and a half on both sides. So driver's side and passenger side, and then 33 and three quarters on the nose in the back. So we came down two and a quarter inches on the front. Uh, that's the driver's side, two and three sixteenths on the passenger side. We came down four and nine sixteenths in the back on the driver's side and four and a quarter on the passenger side for a completely level truck. That's awesome. The fact that you can put it together, not make any different adjustments. Literally when I was adjusting those front struts, I was turning it four times 
and then doing the same thing on the other side. Took it out, drove it, let it settle a little bit, and I think it's still gonna settle a little bit more than what it is, so chances are it may go down another quarter inch, especially in the front. Right now we have a, a variation from front to back of about a quarter of an inch, so it's a quarter inch lower and that's perfect. We were getting to the point where the with no with no pressure on the spring, the spring was starting to get loose, you could move it. Um, that was where I felt comfortable. Now you could go up to three inches. That spring's gonna get really loose though when you've got it off the ground. I don't love that. So um, I was happy with two and a quarter inch in the front. And like I said, I think as, it, as we drive it, it's going to settle even more. I don't know about the back. The other thing guys is we're gonna have to, when we put the helper bags in, I generally like a half inch higher in the back is generally what I shoot for. With the helper bags in the back and keeping at least five to 10 pounds in them at all times, it's gonna raise the back probably about a quarter inch. So it's gonna be about perfect. I'm just, I'm in love with the look of it, guys. So let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this new look. Like I said, I'm, I know this is a really long video. It was meant to be, it was meant to be as in depth as possible for the people that buy this kit. Um, can it be done in your garage? Well, you guys just saw me do it in the garage. The worst part is you're gonna have to find somebody for those sensors to reprogram them. I know I fumbled through that, guys. I tried to show you as best as possible, but so far, so good. So if you have access to a Snap-on Solace, um, you're gonna have to have one of those. Chances are a GM dealer is not gonna wanna touch that. They're not gonna wanna do that. You can buy a Tech 2 online. I don't know if it's gonna be updated with a 2020 or higher. You know, this is 19 to 23. Uh, so I don't know. That's gonna be the hardest part of this kit. Uh, so I will list everything in the description that I used from the kit from Ride Tech, which I absolutely love. Um, and I, I may be trying some Ride Tech. Obviously we're doing some Ride Tech here on the 55, but I may be trying some Ride Tech on some other stuff as far as not bags, but like these coilovers. I'm really happy with the quality of them, so I may be trying them on some other stuff as well. But like I said, either way, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think of this new drop. And while you're down there commenting, make sure you hit the subscribe button, that little bell notification that notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see us put the helper bags on this next.